have any scary stories, please email them to us at weirdworldtv at hotmail.com for your story to be featured in our next video. And remember, we want real spooky stories. Let's begin. The cell phone. A couple of months ago, my friend's cousin, a single mother, bought a new cell phone. After a long day of work, she came home, placed her phone on the counter and went to watch TV. Her son came to her and asked if he could play with a new phone. She told him not to call anyone or mess with text messages and he agreed. At around 11.20 p.m. she was drowsy so she decided to tuck her son in and go to bed. She walked to his room and saw that he wasn't there. She then ran over to her room to find him sleeping on her bed, the phone in his hand. Relieved, she picked the phone up from his hand to inspect it. Browsing through it, she noticed only minor changes, such as a new background, banner, etc. But then she opened up her saved pictures. She began deleting the pictures he'd taken until only one new picture remained. When she first saw it, she was in disbelief. It was her son sleeping on a bed, but the picture was taken by someone else above him and it showed the left half of an elderly woman's face. Ghost Bro My house was built in 1904. It's a single family home, wood frame, sitting on a concrete block foundation. I have been living here for about 12 years. Of all the weird things that my siblings and me have seen or heard in this house, this one event is my favourite. This happened to my brother. About 10 years ago, my brother and his best friends had started a garage band playing mostly Spanish rock, alternative music, but in Spanish. His friends could only get together on Sunday afternoons. They would practice into the early evening and they would usually call it quits by 8 p.m. This was a time I usually showed up and went to bed because I worked the graveyard shift. Now this happened in late fall, so the days were getting shorter. They'd just finished a long session when the decision to head to someone else's house came about. My brother handed his car keys to his buddy so that they could load up the equipment. Everyone had filed out of the basement, but the tricky part was that they needed to walk all the way to the back of the basement and up the back stairs, through the kitchen doorway, down the hall, into the living room and out into the front porch. Everyone was outside sitting in my brother's truck, waiting for him. My brother was walking up the back stairs when he remembered that he'd left his pancakes in a to-go container sitting on a speaker in the basement. He made the decision to go back. Now the basement is not clean. With full sight lines, there'd been partitions made and the boiler and main heating unit are right smack in the middle. So after my brother walks back, he's about to retrieve his food container when out of the corner of his eye, he sees it. It is a shadowy figure right at his peripheral vision. This feeling of dread and uneasiness washed over my brother. We'd been taught that if you're in the presence of a spirit or ghost and you felt a bad vibe to say a quick prayer or to cuss at it. My brother chose the latter. He basically just told, I don't have time for this shit. My brother started to walk to the back of the basement and briskly up the stairs, closing doors and turning off lights as he was walking out. The last light switch is on the opposite side of the door. Luckily, the door was open and the light from the street lamp was flooding the living room with its amber light. My brother said that he felt something at his back, but at no point did he turn around. As he flicked the last switch in the living room, it went dark, as did the rest of the house. As he stepped out, he pulled on the door, closing it behind him. Still holding his food container in one hand, he jogged down the few porch steps. He walked towards the front gate. Our house resides far from the main street, essentially having a large front yard but no rear garage. As he closed the gap between himself and his friend's laden truck, he kind of smiled and thought things over in his head, mad at himself for spooking out when there was no reason. He climbed into the driver's side of the truck, putting on his seatbelt and getting ready to pull out of the parking spot directly in front of the house. When one of his friends asked, Hey, wait, what about your brother? Isn't he coming with us? My brother answered, What do you mean? He went to work early tonight. He's already gone. Do you see his car anywhere? The next question they asked. So then who was that walking behind you when you were leaving the house? 
The Rocking Horse. One night when I was maybe 10 or 12, I had trouble falling asleep. My bedroom was the entire top floor of our house, with my bed and such being on the left hand, and storage clothes and a play area being on the right. I was lying in bed when I heard a noise from the other side of the room and see a rocking horse begin to rock. It was sitting just outside one of the storage closet doors, proceeded to rock its way halfway across the room and stopped dead under the ceiling light. At this point, I was freaking out and I just buried my head under my blankets and never peeked out again until morning. It was all confirmed to not be a dream as the rocking horse was still in the middle of my room when I woke up. Furthermore, I got a stern reprimand from my parents for being up out of bed playing with my toys well past my bedtime. Their bedroom was directly below the storage closet play area and had heard the creaking of the rocking horse shuffling across the room. The grandfather. My grandfather told me this story about one time he was sitting in a chair in front of the house and when he heard his wife repeatedly calling him from inside the house. The thing is, my grandmother passed away a few years before that, but he told me that the voice was so pressing that he actually got up to look inside the house and as soon as he got inside, he heard a loud crash behind him and turned around to see that the chair he'd been sitting in moments ago had been crushed by the cast iron gutter that fell on it. If he hadn't come into the house, he would probably have been seriously injured or worse. I don't know if it's paranormal or not, but every time I think about it, it sends chills down my spine. The following. My older sister has a ghost that's followed her around for years. I lived with her once for about three months and so much weird stuff happened in that time. All my sister would say to me when I mentioned it was that her ghost didn't like me being there. Things like going to bed with everything locked up and switched off and waking up in the morning with the back door open, lights on, and the kettle switched on. One night my sister and I were getting ready to go out and I'd asked to borrow her liquid foundation. I used it and put it back where she kept her makeup. Ten minutes later she's asking me for it and it was nowhere to be seen. She accused me of taking it and made me buy her a new one and refused to listen to my side of the story. About a year or so later when she was packing to move to a new house she found the makeup in a shoebox with some old letters. The shoebox was in a zipped up suitcase that was underneath her bed. But probably the most scared I ever felt was one afternoon when I was the only one in the house, which never happened as four other people lived there. I'd arrived home from work and headed straight to the bathroom. All the doors, windows, etc. were closed. I was standing in the bathroom and started squeezing a pimple on my chin when a female voice in the hall said, Stop picking your zits. It was loud enough and sounded real enough. And at the time I thought it was my sister. So I laughed and told her to piss off and asked what she was doing for dinner. No answer. I stuck my head out into the hall. There's no one there. I searched the house top to bottom and there was no one home. 